Hello everybody, I'm Flint with Flint Forge Gaming. I'm here with Amlac Comet Crusher. Uh, Hello! We'll be asking him a few questions for an interview today. Let's get to know him a little better. Alright, uh... Kayla, what can you tell us about before you were frozen to come to our time? Well, I grew up in the mountains. There with my village, I trained with my father and my, at that time, war band. We trained greatly to crush comets. We practiced on boulders, bandits, sometimes people who got lost. There was a lot of crushing. Yeah, we got your father here took over after the missile missile crisis, and he was training everybody in case it came back. Yes, we were all preparing. It was a good time. What can you tell me about the when you first heard of your destiny? To be frozen, to come forth to do this. It was a great honor to be chosen for this holy mission. I knew from a young age that it was it would be me who would carry on the good name of the Thalagia clan. And I knew that this destiny, while great, might weigh lesser men down, but I am quite strong. I would not be weighed down. All right. Um, when you were unfrozen, the comet had already been destroyed. What can you tell us about that instant? How did you feel? Well, at first I thought the village that I had encountered had been taken over by cultists from Vecna and was preparing to burn it down with everyone inside. But then I slowly realized that the comet or at least what I thought was the comet, actually, was indeed the sun. Afterwards, I felt quite sad, but inside, I could still sense Vecna's presence. So, uh, I knew I still had a destiny to fill. Perhaps not crushing the comet while it was still in the sky, but now that it foolishly landed on the ground, it could not run from me. So you like your destiny then? Very much. Having this great burden is considered a blessing among my tribe. Those who are destined to be weak, perhaps be farmers, I don't know, lesser destinies, they don't require true strength. Goliath embodies true strength. So this comet crushing has taken over most of your life. It's your destiny indeed. But what do you plan to do if this job, if this task is ever complete? Well, a part of the Vecna comet is present within me. So if I can't figure out a way to remove it, I'll probably have to crush myself as well as the rest of the comet pieces. So there's a very strong chance that after my destiny is fulfilled, I will no longer be alive. Complicated choices, indeed. Alright, um, what do you, what do you, both you, Amalak, and your player, Steven, what do you think of the other party members? Let's start with Ronan O'Leary. Well, at first I didn't like Ronan. He was very mean. And he kept calling Miss of Missile a fat bitch. I did not approve of this. I was actually going to crush him at one point. But then Holt, another one of our my war band, took me aside and told me that fat bitch is actually a term of endearment for Ronan's people. It meant of the highest caliber. So whenever he says it now about Miss of Missile, I realize he's just he and myself both agree that she is one of the best goddesses, if not the best. Alright, and what does Steven think of him? Uh, yeah, I like Ronan O'Leary. like the voice. I wish I could do voices. Obviously, my voices are not that great. Uh, you um, and me both. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, I like him as a character. Uh, 
pretty much the first time I saw him, I he reminded me of basically a fantasy Joseph Smith, who is basically the prophet of the Mormon religion. Uh, so yes, I I I instantly liked that about him. Uh, same here. Uh, all right, let's uh, go on to Holt. Well, Ronan told me initially that Holt was a undead creature, some kind of cursed armor that was walking around. But later on, I found out he was a warforged. To be honest, even if he was cursed armor, I wouldn't care that much. He seems okay. You know, he he shoots things. I don't know why. I think warforged are meant to punch things like I am, but he seems to be able to shoot them pretty good, so that's okay. It is a little weird that he's only either smiling or frowning, though. That's kind of concerning, especially at night when they think he's asleep and he's just sitting there in the corner smiling. It's unsettling. Luckily, you have your tent. to Exactly. <laughs> Which you always set up inside. Tents are very important. All right, what does Steven think of him? I like Holt, you know, uh... Especially knowing all the customization that he's going to do to Halt later on, and that he was trying to do last session, but was averted by reasons outside of my control. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I'm actually curious to see how well executed a ranged fighter can go. I've never seen one before, so this is pretty interesting for me as a player. Yeah, it's new for me as well, honestly. I've never actually made one or played one. Yep. All right, uh, let's go to Kato. I like Kato fine. He seems like a good guy. Uh, we first met when we were boarding a pirate ship. Uh, on that pirate ship, at some point, I got thrown overboard. And Kato jumped in and saved me. And then he taught me how to swim. I really like Kato. He's a good addition to a war band. Although, sometimes I think he's a little... I think Ronan and Cusset touched in the head... Maybe he just was overexcited when we were fighting that wyvern, I don't know. Although I will say this, his barracuda is almost certainly an agent of Vecna. It says very unkind things. Yeah, you have to watch out for that. <laughs> what about yes. Steven here? Uh, yeah, I like Kato. Uh, I've actually played with the player who's playing as Kato uh, a second time, uh, before, second time playing with him. Um, yeah, he seems like a good guy. Uh, somewhat quiet, but uh, he seems to be talking more, especially now that he's got his uh, cursed gauntlet slash armlet. So, yeah, it would be interesting to see how that one goes. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. Uh, some good things, some bad things come with it, of course. Alright, what do you think of Ava? I like Ava. She's the only one who paid attention when I was showing all of my warband how to do the comet crushing dance. She not only memorized the steps, but she even improved upon it. High praise indeed. Yeah, she I seems to also play some music for you so you can dance too, of course. It's true. It makes doing the comet crushing dance even better when you don't have to imagine the music in your head. All right, what does Steven think of her? Uh, well, the uh, player playing Ava, uh, this is actually her first time, didn't actually know that at the time. She seems to understand the rules pretty well, and uh, yeah, I think she's doing a pretty good job of role-playing it. I actually quite enjoy the kleptomanic tendencies that she seems to do. Uh, Gotta get that souvenir. Yeah, that's. I, I find that amusing. Uh, I don't think Amlak really knows she's doing that. I don't think he would approve of it, but I think it's funny. Indeed. All right, uh, the newest addition to the party that you're the first to met, uh, Altheros Crimson Moon. Altheros has a 100% finding rate for comets. This makes him an excellent addition to the warband. Not only that, but he seems to understand the love of battle, blood, and death. He does seem to have some kind of weird fixation with the color red, though. Every time I see him eating or drinking things, it's always red. And what about Stephen? 
Uh, well, I don't really know a lot about Altheros at this time. Uh, somewhat quiet. Uh, I know he's playing a homebrew class, uh, Blood Mage, so that should be interesting to see how that plays out uh, as far as balance issues and uh, spells and different things like that. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, how it progresses. Indeed. Uh, I think that covers all the party members. Um, so, you as Amlike, what, what has been your favorite moment so far? Or you as Steven, all together, what was your favorite moment in the game? Well, there was one time uh, when we were traveling to the capital. We had uh, stopped off on the train at this one town uh, because they wanted to check the engine to make sure the train was okay. And while we were there, Altheros and myself uh, went to go get some food while the rest went to go hat shopping. Um, and while we were there, uh, Altheros and Amalek had a pretty uh, funny conversation about uh, Amalek basically admitted that Kenny should love him only. He was the superior mate. Ava, you know, she just, she doesn't understand what Kenny needs. Not like, not like Amalek does. Yeah, Amalek definitely knows how to love a Kenku. <laughs> yes, he knows all of the things. I'll leave that to your imagination as to what those things are, but he knows. My personal favorite moment is when y'all went to go rob a bank because it had a comic piece in there. And everybody else is planning this out and you're just trying to launch the cannons getting the pirates back to be pirates. Exactly. Those people were... There's a 300% chance that they were all agents of Vecna and they were hoarding the common pieces for evil purposes. Alright, so basically your character is all about comet crushing, doing anything to do it. Uh, even getting yourself arrested in the process, it doesn't matter as long as you get your task done. Yeah, uh, Amalek has a very singular focus. He he needs to accomplish his goal. To some degree, he feels like he needs to live up to his father's uh, uh, legacy, seeing as how he's uh, Thalagia as well. It's very important to him to continue the good name of the Thalagia clan, uh, and he believes in completely wiping out the comet will cement his place in the next, as far as the the chain goes in the Thalagia's uh, family tree. Yeah, here recently, speaking of your family, you ran into your uncle. Did that bring up any Scum. tough memories for you? My uncle is a no-good traitor. He spit upon the gifts that he was given. He refused his destiny, his calling, and his mission. He not only failed his family, he failed his tribe, his goddess, and himself. As a matter of fact, my good friend Ronan, I never would have figured this out if he, unless he had told me, but my good friend Ronan was explaining to me that if you rip somebody's fingernails off before you bury them alive, it is much more efficient and painful. I will have to do this now. I believe you can pretty much call it ends for him at that point. I think so too, voice. The only trouble being is he is currently cursed with the undying. Then he'll be undead without fingers forever. <laughs> yeah, you'll Fingernails, have to, I mean. Have to see how that goes, yes. Uh, do you never plan be on able to scratch himself again. Do you plan on tracking him down? Yes. Now that I know for sure that he's an agent of Vecna, if I track him down, he will no doubt lead me to other cultists, which I will then crush. And then, as I said before, I will bury him alive, since he refuses to die. Yeah, because he had the one tooth that was obviously a piece of the Vecna Comet. Yes. Hopefully one day you'll track him down and avenge your claim to the everything. One day soon. Hopefully. Uh, yeah, right now you're in prison. We'll get back to that next week, or at the end of this week, actually. And we'll try to uh, see what we can get you to do. Yeah. Prison isn't actually as bad as people say. I'm not entirely certain why everyone avoids it so frequently, but... Eh. 
to each his own, I guess. Kato didn't seem to want to avoid it. <laughs> yeah, you have company in there at least. Alright, uh, again, this has been Amlek from the Missile Missile campaign. And that's all we got. Any last words, Amlek? Uncle, if you're listening, I'm going to find you and I'm going to drip out your fingernails. Again, this has been Flint with Flint Forge Gaming and Steven playing Amlek. Bye, all.